Today we're going to look at a claim, a claim in regard to beta-glucan and surviving lethal doses of radiation, and I'm talking high levels of radiation. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of data out there, unfortunately a lot of it does not have the DOI citations or the PubMed citations, so it required a little bit of sifting through, but we're only going to go through this briefly. So please bear with me. I'm not going to read the actual title of the research from each individual article, but I will read the conclusion of the article we want to look at. First, often with beta-glucan, you'll see this one statement out there, and this is a statement which is quite common in regard to uh, seeing in a lot of blog posts. When mice were given an oral dose of beta-1,3-glucan after radiation exposure, 70% were completely protected from the damaging effects. That means seven out of the 10 mice they were exposed to lethal doses of radiation, survived without any damaging effects. That's pretty amazing. We're not saying say 70% more, we're saying seven out of 10 had no damaging effects in regard to exposure to a lethal dose of radiation. That is a pretty dang strong claim not to have a DUI citation next to it. However though, when looking at the research, there's actually quite a bit of research in regard to beta-glucan that is DOI cited, even though regrettably, a lot of the full text HTML is not easy to access. But let us begin. The first one we have to look at in supporting that first statement, which seemed kind of extreme, was this one. Comparative effect of soluble and particular glucans to survival in irradiated mice. I will read that one. This was some time back. The survival enhancing capabilities of particulate and soluble glucan a beta-1,3 polyglycon pyological response modifier, that's the beta-glucon, were assayed in 60 CO irradiated mice. Although glucon, the polyunsaturated, was slightly more effective than glucon F, both glucons significantly enhanced survival in otherwise lethally irradiated mice. Now you can see this number here in 9 to 11 in that GY, that stands for gray. Gray is a form of uh, measurement to see exactly how much tissue is, or I should say how much radiation absorbed into tissue or should say ionizing radiation. It's a little bit different than just the levels of radiation itself, but seeing what's actually gets into the tissue on its own. Following nine gray, 60% of the glucon P treated and 53% of the glucon F treated mice exhibited long-term survival as opposed to 0% of the radiation control mice. Look at the graph. The 0%, they just did a typical saline solution. The 60%, that was the beta-glucon. And look at the time, looking about between 10 to 12 days after a nine gray unit. Well, you'll ask, well, what the heck is a nine gray unit of radiation? What does that mean to me? All right, look at the next study. All right, this is how they determine what a lethal amount of a full body exposure to a gray unit is. So. Both calculations met statistical validity tests support previous estimates that the medium lethal dose based solely on human data is around three gray. So here you have mice being exposed between nine and 11, almost four times a lethal dose of radiation. And at least according to this study, 60% survive with just administration of beta-glucan and nothing else. And look at the amount, it's not a lot. It's only 10 milligrams per kilogram, considering the body weight. All right, now as far as dosage timing, without access to the full HTML, we had to go basically to another study to basically draw a conjecture, which I don't like doing, but we, do, we deal with what we have. It goes this, in the next study, in addition to the administration of glucon before lethal irradiation, uh, 900 rads, Enhanced survival, the most significant results were seen when glucon was administered one day prior to radiation. Now in this study, they also administered glucon one hour after and one hour before, but best, if someone was going into a hostile environment, it's best to have that beta-glucon in the system at least one day prior. Now how in the world does beta-glucon help you survive doses of radiation, which is up to four times what's required to be lethal? Well, looking at advanced space research from 1992, this was their hypothesis on how beta-glucan may work. So it goes into the radio protection by polysaccharides alone in combination with aminothiols. We demonstrated that glucan, a beta-1,3 polysaccharide immunomodulator, enhances survival of mice when administered before radiation exposure. Glucan's prophylactic survival enhancing effects are mediated by several mechanisms, including one, 
increase in macrophage mediated resistance, potentially lethal post irradiation opportunistic infections. Number two, increase in the DO of hemopoietic progenitor, progenitor cells, progenitor cells, and three, accelerating the hemopoietic, I like that word, hematopoietic reconstitution. In addition, even when administered shortly after some otherwise lethal dose of radiation, glucon increases survival. Beta-glucon has got a lot of promise. Again, it meets that criteria for redundancy where it is being, the same results are being repeated over and over and over again um, by different experimenters. However, though, I like to see more full text HTML so I get into the details so it's easy for anybody to repeat these studies. But, however, if things were push comes to shove, beta-glucon has a lot, a lot, a lot of promise when it comes to helping offset potentially the damaging effects of radiation and needs to be researched much further, especially something this incredibly promising. Again, this is Ralph Torciano signing off, and I really do hope this helps. Thank you.